Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Let's begin. Uh, what you're looking at is a Python bot that is playing Diablo for me. So you can see I'm not touching any of the keys and the robot is playing Diablo for me. So I just show this to show you that if there's any doubters, I don't think there would be, but if there's any doubters about like what, what, how much more you can accomplish if you know how to code. And even if you just know very minimally a little bit of Python and a little bit of Linux and a little bit of this and that, you can do a lot of stuff. And there's so much open source software out there that if you just know a little bit of how to install things, a little bit of how to run main files, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. Okay. So I just show this as an example um, of kind of like the power of coding. I can, I don't even have to play video games anymore. I just watch my robot play video games for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me stop this now. What I kind of want to do is I, I want to do an interactive coding. And I, I, I want to try to keep it as simple as possible, but yet I want to do something that you can see the immediate practicality of it. It might be simple, but you can see the immediate usage of it. And if you understand how to do that, then you could maybe be inspired to do more complicated things. So what I would suggest is the first thing, if you are actually interested in like following along, um, you want to make sure that Python is installed on your computer. So one thing you should do, you should go to Google and you should search mini conda installation. Um, and this should be a package you can just download here. Here, you can just download it for Windows. Just download this, install it. Miniconda is essentially just kind of like a command line thing that you can use for Python. That's what I'm using. So in the, in the coding class, we talked about what are called IDEs. I think they were intellectual development environments. Those are much more complicated sort of programs you can install and you can use those. But I kind of like the idea of just writing actually code in like a text editor and then running the code. So if you download this mini Conda 3 for your Windows or for your Mac or for your Linux, you should be able to follow along. It shouldn't take that long. So start with that. And that will give you the minimal requirements to be able to start running some code. Okay. Okay, so let's try to write some. And then we will try to run. And if you're following along on video, feel free to pause the recording whenever you whenever you want. So what I want to try to do is I want to try to write the reverse complement algorithm we use every day. So when we're teaching and when we're talking about oligos or DNA sequences, we're always going to this reverse complement website and we're typing in our sequence and then we're hitting submit and it's giving us this reverse complement. We could make our own if we wanted to. And I just want to demonstrate that we are easily capable of doing it. And I'll describe the code as we go through it. Okay. So let's start writing some, some Python. So first, Let's, I'm going to set, this is sublime. This is the thing I told you to write. It's just a text editor or download. This is just a text editor. I'm going to first just change the syntax, the view syntax to show me Python colors. Let's do a test. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So I'm going to make a comment. Typically when you open up a Python file at the very, very top, you see a few different things. You see, you see comments. So let's say, let's, let's do authorship. John Beckman wrote this Python file. Let's give it uh, a title. Actually, typically what you'll see is you'll see a different style of comments. At the top, you'll see this triple 
this triple parenthesis. This is another way to do comments. This is another way to do comments. So anyway, the point is that when you open up a coding file, typically at the very, very top, you're gonna see comments about what that thing is. So let's just write what this is gonna be. This is a reverse complement algorithm. Let's do the date, 3.16.2022. Okay. Now first let's just let's just set up our system and see if we can get any code running. So whenever you learn to code, the first thing you always learn is you learn print hello world. This is usually like the first thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type print parenthesis uh quotation marks Hello world. And then I'm gonna save this, save as. I created a folder on the desktop that's just called Python tests, okay? And I'm gonna save this as hello world test.py. .py is the extension for Python, okay? So I haven't done anything crazy all I did was literally just type a file that says print hello world and I saved it as a hello world.py file. Now I'm going to try to run the code. Okay. So let me quick open my mini conda. Okay. So I've opened this command prompt, which you will be able to open if you download this mini conda thing. It should have Python ready to go. Okay. And so the first thing you need to learn about these weird command prompts is, and nobody really tells you this, it's kind of obvious, I guess, but nobody really tells you this. These command prompts are simply just like a way to talk with a computer that does not use a GUI, which is a graphical user interface. So normally you're used to interacting with computers with your mouse and you open these little files by double clicking. When you start coding, most people are interacting with the computer by typing in, typing in codes. And when they're navigating or traversing for different files, they will navigate to that file by typing in codes into this command line. It's really weird when you start doing it. It's very weird. But this is how Linux and command line operates. Okay. So the first thing I do want to do is if I want to run this file that I just created, this hello world, if I want to run that, the first thing I have to do is I have to navigate to the folder that has it. So the folder is on my desktop in my Python tests folder. There's the file. So I can actually see it with my graphical user interface but I can't navigate to it with the GUI in the command line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit copy, right click, copy as path. So I'm gonna steal that path, okay? And I'm gonna paste it here. This is the essentially like the location of that file. So it's in my C drive, users, Beckham, desktop, Python test was that folder. And here's the actual file hello world.py or hello world test.py. Okay, so I'm gonna just navigate to the folder. So I deleted the file name and I just left the folder. Okay, now if I wanna navigate to the folder, you have to type in a command, which is CD. CD stands for change directory. Okay, that's the first command you should learn in command line. It's just CD, change directory. So if I hit enter, it should navigate to that folder. Okay, so now I'm in that folder. And that file is in that folder. So now we're going to try to run. It. So to run that program, all I have to type is I just have to type Python, which is like telling the computer, do a Python run. And then I have to tell it the name, the exact precise name of that file. And the name of that file is, let me just make sure I get it right, hello world test.py. Hello world test.py. So when I hit enter, what should happen is 
we should see Hello World come back to us because it should be executing the Hello World print in that file. Let's do it. OK, it worked. See? There it is right there. So now you have written your first computer program. This is always like the first, like, OK, yeah, that's dumb. This is always like the first thing you learn. You learn how to print Hello World. All right. Now let's actually start writing this into a reverse complement algorithm using what we discussed, using the features that we discussed in the last lab lecture on computer science. OK. So we're going to have to navigate some kind of, there's going to have to be some kind of input, right? We're going to have to give it a sequence of DNA. There's going to have to be some kind of like algorithm. And it's going to be have to be some kind of like output. So when we do the output, it's nice that we've already kind of figured out how to do output. We can just print stuff. We can just say print. But we're going to have to change the hello world when we get to that. OK. So let's just leave this as we are working on it. OK. Let's set some inputs. So we're going to be working with DNA, because this is going to be a reverse complement algorithm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a variable. Initialize a variable. OK, so it's a comment. Initialize a variable. Let's call this variable input sequence. And I'm going to say input sequence is equal to a string. So I put a quotation mark, which means a string. OK, and let's just say it's. Let's do something very simple, A, T, G, C. That's our input sequence, OK? Now let's test to see if our program is working. Let's just say print input. Got to get rid of those quotation marks. Let's print that variable, input sequence. Let's save this. And then let's rerun our test. It's now printing ATGC, OK? So that's good. So it's read our input. Now we have to start like changing it through an algorithm to generate the output that we want. So there's going to be three components of this. Component one will be reverse. Component two will be complement. And then component three will be the reverse complement. All right. So reverse. How are we going to do that algorithmically? The nice thing is that in Python, most of this stuff has already been thought of. Most of the stuff has like already been taken care of in many situations. So I guarantee you there's already like a reverse algorithm for strings in Python. And so remember what I said in the last lecture, which is like computer science is a lot of Googling syntax. OK, so I'm going to show you like what I would do. I think I know what it is, but I'm just going to show you what you would do if you were in my situation where you did not know. You would say how to reverse a string in Python syntax. Let's see what it tells us. Um, I know what it is. Let's see. There's no hmm. a slice that steps. Hang on. Let me just test something. Let me test something quick. Input sequence dot. First. Let's let me just see if this works. Yeah, it did not. Okay, so they're correct. So we can't just type like dot reverse, although sometimes you can. This is why I said I would never code in front of people. <laughs> it's a lot of Googling. Um okay, so now we have to like try to like read the syntax and figure out how to understand it. So they're saying, they're doing exactly what we were doing. They're taking the variable, they're setting it equal to something, okay? 
And then they are giving this little extra command that's saying, read it in reverse, okay? So this is essentially a syntax that's gonna tell it to read it backwards. Let's see if we can use this to adjust our Python sequence. So let's try input sequence is gonna change. So it's gonna be equal to input, sequence and then let's paste that little thing so this is essentially a code i don't know if this is going to work i hope it's going to work this is a code that's saying we're going to change the input sequence it's going to be equal to the old input sequence reversed that's how you would sort of like read that in pseudocode let's save it and let's test it so we'll run it it worked okay so now you see what's coming back to you is c g t a Okay, so we got the reverse. We succeeded. Now it's going to start to get a little bit more complicated. Let's write an algorithm that's going to give us a complement. Okay, so not the reverse complement, just the complement. Okay, so this is going to get more complicated. We're going to have to use our, we're going to have to use, use control structures, logic and loops to change the string into its complement. All right, so how are we gonna do that? Let's do, I'm, I'm debating. So let's try this. Let's do a for loop. Let's, let's try, try a for loop. So let's say for, letters in input sequence let's see i'm just testing this let's see what happens if we print the letter this is essentially what i wanted to do is i wanted to i wanted to start scanning through the sequence because we're going to have to do something to each element okay so let's just first see if we can scan through the sequence and print each letter okay let's try it Hopefully this works. It worked. See, as you see, it scan, it's scanning through. So for each letter in input sequence, it's reading through and it's printing that letter. It's seeing C, print, G, print, T, print, A, print. Okay, so this is good. This is good. This is how you code. You like, you like start navigating your logic structures with these print commands and seeing what it does. Okay, now what we need to do is now we need to set up some logic. Okay, so for each letter in input sequence, if letter is equal, so when you do a equal test, it's the double equal. So this is asking if it's equal to an A, what we want to do is we want to change that letter. I'm going to do this in pseudocode. We're going to want to change that to a T. Okay, so first I'm going to build this up in pseudocode, in pseudocode. Else if letter is equal to a T, we're going to want to change that to an A. You have to do these little colons when you start doing this logic, okay? Else if letter is equal to C, we're going to want to change that letter to a G. And the last one else, uh, else you don't have to, we could, like, I could type else if and type it out, but you don't have to, because it's the last condition, which has to be true in this case. Um, Let's just type it out to be complete. Else if letter is equal to G. Change that to a C. Okay. We haven't changed anything yet. We're just setting up the logic. Okay. So I know we're going to have to do like a new string. Okay. So let's say new string is equal to nothing. 
Okay. So this is going to be new string is going to be the variable that's going to hold the complemented string as it's being made, if that makes sense. So we have an original input. It's going to get fed in. This for loop is going to look at each element. And as it looks at each element, it needs to keep track of what it should change it to. And so where is it going to hold the what it should change it to? It's going to hold it in this new string variable that I just set up. OK. So now let's actually change, start changing the code. So if letter A is equal to, or if the letter is equal to an A, then new string is going to equal the old new string, which is nothing at this point, plus T. OK, and this line is going to be the same for each of these except it's going to be, in this case, it's going to be A. In this case, it's going to be G. And in this case, it's going to be C. OK, so if you have not had any coding, for those who have had coding, I know this is going to be ridiculously boring. But for those who have not had coding, something like this can be kind of like revolutionary in terms of like helping you understand how things work. So let me just explain it and walk it through. This line is saying we're going to have a holder that's going to keep track of the new string as we build it. Okay. And right now it's saying that the new string is equal to nothing. And then it's going to say for letter in the input sequence, if the letter is equal to A, the new string should essentially add that A or add that T, add a T instead. Okay. Ditto all the way down the line. And then let's test it. Let's do at the very end, let's do print new string. Okay. And actually, as I print, I'm also going to print this was the old string. This was the input. I should say input. This was the input. Okay. Let's save it. Let's try to run it. Let's see if it works. Let's see if our dominant algorithm works. It worked. So, so look, it's saying this was the input string, C, G, T, A. And look above it, it printed the exact complement, which is G, C, A, T. So it worked. It works. Good. OK, now we need to do reverse complement. OK, so reverse complement will essentially be we need to take that new string and do that code where it reverses it. OK, so let's instead do print new string in the reverse. Wait, will this work? Let's see if this works. Let's save it. File, save, run it. This was the input string. There, this is the reverse, and it's reversed complement. So it worked. OK, it worked. This is the reverse complement. So now let's make it nice. Like, let's make it nice. Um, now we're like putting on like bells and whistles. It works. Let's do, let's define this as a method. So remember in the last lecture, I talked about there are classes. And classes have methods. And imagine we wanted to put this code as something larger. We would want to organize it as a method. OK, so let's do that. Let's organize it as a method. In Python, if you want to define a method, you say define. So it, it'll, it'll kind of like tell you. Sublime will kind of like tell you. We're going to define a method. So we're going to define a method and it's going to be called reverse 
complement. Okay. And remember when I described methods, I described that methods have parameters. Okay. And parameters are the inputs. Okay. So in this case, you have to tell the method what should be the input. Okay. So there should be a space where we can input the sequence within the method. Okay. Now, we're starting to get into more detailed syntax. I don't want you to get bogged down in the syntax, but I have to tab these underneath the method so that what we just wrote becomes a part of this method. Okay. Um, one second, let me think about this. Holder is equal to input sequence. Okay, so let me explain what I'm writing. This might not be the most shortest way to do this. I'm trying to write this in the most rational way to explain what's happening. So as we wrote the method and we gave one parameter should be an input sequence, okay? And what I'm doing now is I'm saying a holder variable, just a variable called holder is gonna hold that input sequence. And when I type underneath a method, when I type the same exact thing that is actually a parameter, it's literally saying, take this thing, the input that you send in and make it equal to the holder variable, okay? And now what I wanna do is then I wanna do everything to that holder text. So then I'm gonna take the holder text and I'm gonna reverse it. That's what's happening here. This is the reverse. So actually what I'm doing here is literally in this line, I'm storing the input. In this function, I am reversing it. And then I need to take the reverse complement, which we wrote this nice algorithm for. So we're still gonna use the new string. And the only thing I have to do is change this. In this case, we're looking now at holder because that's what we defined it as. So now it's scanning through this holder. And now, now instead of print, remember what I said about algorithms have an input, a termination, and an output, okay? So we need to do what's called a return. So instead of printing this, I'm gonna do return. And the return is means like when you call this method, do the function and then send this back to me, okay? Now let's test it, okay? So our method is now written. It's got an input, it's got an algorithm, and it's got an output, which is this return function. I can actually add that comment. Now what we should be able to do is we should be able to call our method. Okay, and the way that you call the method is you literally just type what it's called. So let's, let's do it down here. Let's do reverse complement. Let's do the reverse, comp let's do some tests. Let's do ATG. So let's say test one, is equal to ATG. And let's say test two is equal to uh, CCG. And let's call the reverse complement method on test one, which is gonna be our input. And let's say, let's print the output. Okay. And then let's do a second test on the reverse complement of test two. And let's also just put some nice print statements. Let's, let's say something like print. Here are the results of your function. And let's say the input was test one.
the second input was test two. All right, let's try this. Let's see if our method works. Method of madness. Oh, we got an error. So whenever you get an error in coding, very common, it should like tell you. The errors sometimes like tell you invalid syntax. It doesn't like the, it doesn't like this. Oh, I need a, I need a colon. That's why. So in Python, anytime you define a method or anytime you define like a logic structure, you need this colon. That should fix the, that should fix the issue. No, I don't want to purchase. I'm cheap as hell. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Okay. So here are the results of your function. The input was ATG. The second input was CCG. And the reverse complement is C or T. Hang on. Is that the reverse complement? Or is that just the reverse? T A C. That's just the reverse. Or that's just the complement. Something happened. It didn't get reversed. This is why I never want to call it code in front of anybody. Oh, it's because we reversed it. It's because we reversed it twice. That's why. So here we reversed it once and then we reversed it again, which was stupid. Because the reverse of the reverse is the normal. So we should be able to fix it by just deleting one of those reverses. Let's try it again. Have I redeemed myself? Yes, C-A-T. That is the reverse complement of A-T-G. And this is the reverse complement of that. We did it. Okay. So, so this is uh, a method. And now you kind of can see under the nuts and bolts of this is literally, literally something as simple as this. You all could literally write this. Like you might not, it might, it might kind of like go quickly through your brain. Um, if you don't have a lot of experience coding, but this is an algorithm that's so simple. Like if you just pause the video a few times and you go through this, like you'll, you'll figure it out, you'll get it. And you just look at the code, you'll, un you'll be able to understand it. So this is one of the most useful, one of the most simple algorithms. You can now see how it's written.